Dear students, botanist, biologist and researchers, in this episode I will give you a very easy and a simple way for describing the rose flowers. So this episode will give you the very easy way to learn the floral formula, to draw the floral diagram and to learn about the different parts of the flower. I will give you the practical details of various dissecting parts of the flowers. The floral formula, floral diagram and you can learn easily different terminologies that are easy way to learn then then these terms are used to describe any flower. I will describe the rose flower which is called as Rosa Indica which belongs to the family Rosaceae. Rose flower is a complete flower when the flower contains calyx, corolla, androecium, and gynecium, when the all four worlds are present in the flower, this card is complete flower. Rose flower is a pedicel that is called as pedicellate flowers. Where the flower arises, you see the small leaf like structures known as bract. Bract rise at the base of the flower. So, this is called as bracteate flower. So, the rose flower is a bracteate, pedicellate, and complete. And this flower is also called as perfect flower because both androecium and gynecium are present. That is the male part and female part. So this is called as a perfect flower, hermaphrodite or bisexual. The symmetry is radical. So this is called as a regular or actinomorphic flower. Now where you see it is the outermost world that is greenish color and it consists of five units here you count the number one two three four and five so this world is called as calyx and each unit of calyx is known as sepals in this flower that is the rose flower the sepals are five in number and they are free from each other if the sepals are free it is called as polysepalous the second world of the rose flower is called as corolla. These are the different colors that is reddish, pinkish, sometimes whitish, sometimes yellowish or sometimes dark blackish color. So in this flower, the petals are five and multiple of the five. So the condition is known as that the petals are free from each other. You see all the petals are free from each other. This is called as polypetalous. Polypetalous corolla which consists of five and multiple of the five petals. Here you see it is the third world of the rose flower that consists of a small needle-like structures known as anthers. And each anther consists of two parts. The swollen part that is called as anther. The filament that is called as a stalk of the stamens. This is called as filament. So each stamen consists of filament and anther. This world is known as androecium and it is also known as a male part of the flower. Here you see it is a close view of the androecium that is the male part which consists of small needle like structures known as stamens. So in the rose flower here you see the stamens are multiple in number that is they are infinity and they are free from each other. So when the stamens are free from each other this is called as polyandrous. So the condition is known as polyandrous. Here I separate the stamen and each stamen consists of a stalk like a very uh, thin stalk that is called as filament and the upper part that is swollen this is called as anther which contains pollen. Now I remove all the parts that is petals, stamens and show you the fourth world that is the innermost world that is called as ovary. So this world you here you see this is called as gynoecium and when you remove the other parts you can easily move this. So this is a complete gynoecium that is the basal part known as ovary. The stalk like portion that is called as style and the upper swollen part that is called as stigma. So the gynoecium is the female part of the rose plant or a rose flower which consists of three parts. The basal one that is called as ovary, the stalk like structure that is called as uh, style and the upper swollen part that is called as stigma. In this flower the carpels are five in number sometimes multiple of fives and they are united to each other that is called as syncarpus. Ovary is superior because in the major 
conditions of the flower in the rose family is perigynous where the ovary is superior. The placentation, if we dissect this ovary, we see the placentation where the ovules attach in the axle, so the placentation is exile. Now, we have discussed about the various parts of the flowers of rose, so I will draw here the complete floral formula of this plant. This is the symbol that is used for actinomorphic flower when the symmetry is radical and regular. You can divide the flower from every point. Here you see the symmetry of the flower is regular. So when the flower has a regular symmetry, this is called as a radial symmetry in rose flower. I have shown you two parts that is the male part and female part. Male part is called as androecium while the female part is called as gynecium. So the rose flower contains both male and female parts. So this is called as a bisexual or hermaphrodite. So this symbol is basically applied for hermaphrodite or a bisexual flower. Here I will show you the first world that is called as calyx. Calyx is represented by a symbol K. I already shown you that the sepals are five in number and they are free from each other. So this is the symbol used for the calyx five and they are polysepalous. Here you see the sepals are five, one, two, three and four and five, but they are free from each other that is called as polysepalous. C is the symbol that is used for corolla. I have already shown you free from each other and they are five and multiple of fives. So when the petals are five or multiple of five, we can represent in this form that is infinity and they are all free from each other that is polypetalous. Male part of the flower that is androecium and androecium consists of a number of the stamens that consist of anther and filaments. So the A is the symbol that is used for androecium and the stamens are infinity and they are free from each other that is polyandrous. I present the gynecium by a symbol that is G, G for gynecium and I have already shown you that the gynecium consists of five carpels or multiple of five carpels. So there are a infinity that is carpels are number are many and they are united to each other that is syncarpus and ovary is superior. When the ovary is superior you can represent by underline. Underline means that the ovary is superior and other flower, other flower parts are inferior. So this flower is called as perigynous because different floral parts that is sepals, petals and rations are uh, covered around the ovary. So this is the condition that is applied for the rose flower. On the basis of this floral formula, I will draw the floral diagram. Floral formula is the symbolic representation of various units of the flowers, while the floral diagram is the symbolic representation of these various units in the form of diagram. Now I uh, make a floral diagram based on the floral formula. When you go, are going to draw the floral diagram, first you drop a point. This is called as mother axis. Mother axis is the axis where the flower arises on the floral branch. Here you see that the sepals are five in number, that the calyx consists of five units, that the sepals are free from each other. So I will draw these five sepals which are free from each other. So I draw five units of sepals, that is they are free from each other. So the flower consists of calyx which are five in number and they are polysepalous. Now here you see the petals are five or multiple of fives and they are uh, free from each other that is polypetals. So you can uh, draw the petals which are many in numbers and they are free from each other. So I have drawn number of the petals that they are free from each other that is polypetalous. So this is the second one. The first world is called as calyx and the second world that is consists of multiple of the petals that is called as corolla. Now I will draw the third world that is called as androecium or a male part of the flower. Androeciums are 
consist of a number of the stamens and they are free from each other. So this is the third word that is called as androecium. That is the male part of the rose flower. Now I will draw the last word that is gynecium and gynecium consists of a multiple of the carpals. They are free, they are united to each other that is the sin carpus and the ovary is superior. Here I can show you the ovary and ovary consists of in rose flower that is multilocular and the ovules attached to the egg cells. So this is called as exile presentation. This is called as gynoecium and the presentation is called as exile. So this is the simple way you can draw the floral diagram based on the floral parts that is the floral fiber.